The trashiest landlord here. Get it? Because I have a dumpster business. And our plate is full. Very full. This is the last 20 yard dumpster. We're rolling in the weekend. So we need to get it dropped. We have a lot going on. So if you follow the channel, you already know this, so bear with me, but I have a dumpster business, and when dumpsters go well, we reinvest. Rather than always turning around and buying more dumpsters or focusing only on the dumpster business, I tend to focus a lot on buying property. And boy, do I have an update for you guys. I might be a little crazy. Let's get this 20 yard drop first. Double check nobody tossed anything in while I was sitting at the shop. Let's get out of here. On to the next thing. I'm in a bit of a hurry, but I need to get my dogs out of this house real quick. If you follow the channel for a long time, you know that, well, this is my house. We start a lot of our days here. But if everything works out, that's going to change here soon. Happy wife, happy life. You girls want to go for a ride? Let's go to the truck. I can't tell you how much blood, sweat, and tears I've poured into this house. There were pretty much showings all evening yesterday and for the rest of the day today, so these pups are going to hang out with me for a bit. Another pickup. Crazy thing is just how quickly the decision to move happened. Just gotten back from Hawaii and just so happened to have driven past my wife's childhood dream home. Of course, I tried to crush her dreams and talk her out of it by using, you know, common financial sense. We have a great interest rate. There's no reason to move. We've got a great house. We don't need to do that. We're perfectly fine where we're at. This one's a bit heavy. No worries here. Watch your toes. So after talking about it, she kind of, you know, dropped the subject. Then sometime around nine or 10 o'clock at night, I could sense that she was using her voodoo powers. Then she woke me up in the middle of the night, pretty sure, but she started using them again. Unless I dreamt that one. And before I woke up to start work the next day, I could feel she was doing it again. And if you're a married man, you know some women are really good with their voodoo. Really good. So needless to say, but it gets even more interesting than that. Because before I went on vacation, I got this place under contract as well. This place is pretty unique and I'm actually really excited for this project, but it needs a lot of work. But there's a reason I actually bought this. So here's where this is located. And two doors down from that is my six unit apartment building that you guys have seen before. This building is kind of my pride and joy. I really was excited to get this when I moved back to town. The cool thing too is it's right across the street from one of our major medical buildings and then one block away from that is the major hospital. So of course traveling nurses, plenty of people that are looking for apartment buildings. But I brought Brock along because we're actually going to go into this place and get some better ideas of what I'm in for. This one? No, not this one. We're not two this. two doors down. Okay. All right, guys, I wanna be super clear. I am not here to convince you to start a dumpster business, and I am definitely not here to sell you a course. I want that to be super clear. I don't wanna do those things, but what I do wanna do is use myself as a use case of what can be achieved when you use your hard-earned money to reinvest. I hope you can tell from past content, I'm not super rich. I'm doing well, you know, I, I'm blessed in every way that I can imagine, but I'm not driving around in a Lamborghini. I'm not, you know, racing around in sports cars yet. And I'm really just using my hard earned money and reinvesting it in what I feel is the smartest way possible. 
For me, that was just coming up with one or two really good deals in the past that then let me leverage them to purchase new deals in the future using equity to build more equity and purchase more assets, which is one different way to do it from what a lot of us are taught as the Dave Ramsey way of saving every paycheck. I believe the Dave Ramsey way is great for somebody who got themselves in a really bad situation and tried to dig themselves out of debt. But I truly believe one of the best ways to grow wealth is the man who wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And that is to use assets or debt that you already have and leverage it to build more equity with more assets. So that's the direction I'm going and I'm using this as a use case. You can watch these videos and hope the entire time that I'll eventually fail. Or you can take them as a use case of something that's actually working. I've always used this YouTube channel as a place that I can look back to see where I was and compare it to where I am now. And I think it'd be a really cool journey to follow. Not only that though, anybody else that's watching, I hope you can recognize that I don't think a lot of this stuff is taught in school. And I'm talking high school and or college, especially for us blue collar guys who just, you know, this isn't a discussion that most of us have with each other. So I hope that any of you can see this and maybe set yourself on a path to actually grow wealth rather than just working day in and day out until you're done. Okay. So I have a lot of ideas for this place. We walk right in, you've got like a desk right away, and then it comes in one bathroom. This is another office. I'm not gonna show you guys a whole lot. The owner was nice enough to let me come in, but I'm not gonna show all of his files and stuff. We got two offices right there. Come in here, looks like a small break room with a sink, so more plumbing. Come in here, we've got more like a office space or maybe a conference room. Then you come in here, what do you know? Another office space. It's gonna be the uh, Rolling Ops headquarters or something? Is that mm, what we're working at? Not yet, but maybe. Wait, see, I can't check those things. I'm too short. The deal is there's a lot that I could do with this space. I could basically keep this downstairs commercial, turn it into an office or keep it an office. But there's one thing I'd want to change. Like a lot of it's paneling. It's just been painted. So I really want to rework the space because another thing is when you kind of like walk through the hallway, it feels tight. I would want to open it up a little bit if we can, especially like right over here. This one, this one just kind of gets me. I'm a small guy. I don't like that. Of course, we've got bathroom space that could essentially be turned into a shower as well if we wanted to turn it into a nice big apartment. Here's where it starts to get a little bit more special. We've got a kitchen back here. Again, another bathroom, but no shower. And then you come over here. What they've been using more is a storage space. Right around the corner. Upstairs apartment with a separate entrance to the back. It also has a private backyard space with an entrance to the basement, but obviously this needs a ton of work, but could be a really, really cool private space. The landscape masters see some potential back here for sure. There's a lot of potential back here. A lot of handwork though. Yeah, you're not getting a lot of machines back through this building. Then we've got the upstairs that was already used as an apartment building, definitely needs a refresh, but easy potential here. The coolest thing about this deal is it all came together because of a local subscriber. You guys know Keegan, the driver for my company. Well, he had a buddy who lived in this place for a short period of time. And he, you know, got word his landlord was looking to sell it. And he knew I owned the building right next door. So he reached out to Keegan. Keegan made sure to let me know right, right away and here we are. So in a weird way, it's all because of you. So shout out, won't drop his name here, but thank you. But we have one bedroom here, looks out onto the street. I really love these types of views in downtown areas. We've got a big old walk-in closet right here. Again, a lot of paneling. I would love to kind of see it all become drywall. I feel like a girl would really love this space. Oh, some different light fixtures, different ceilings. Come through here. What do you think? Yeah, see how we could tear that out and make it into a bigger? Yeah, that's what I was looking at. Yeah, it's like, it's a little cut up in certain areas. 
but you could really open it up. The bathroom's a bathroom, nothing special about it. Again, you guys need to see the potential. A little bit of work. Oh, the bird's nest. Ah, bird's nest. Bird's nest. Okay. It even looks like it's got an old laundry chute. Do you think it goes to the basement? All right, so we made it to the creepy basement. That transition didn't work as well as I thought, but yeah, there's a laundry chute. This guy like guns. Holy cow. <laughs> Hot water heater's pretty new. HVAC's pretty good, I already looked at that. Got that stone foundation. This is like a shelter down here. Not bad. For these old buildings, man. These basements hold up so well, it's crazy. Yeah, you don't see a whole lot of sister joints. I mean, it looks really good. Creepy old crawl space. Clay's about to hop up in there. Check I am out. not about to hop up in there. <laughs> Another part I like is this old side access to that unit there in the back that leads upstairs. I just love kind of like that brick hallway feel. And then you kind of walk through here and then again, imagine you walk into that nice private backyard. It could be pretty cool. What do you think? A lot of potential. Just gotta figure out what route to go. There's about three different options you got. Obviously, yeah. It's the hardest thing is gonna be deciding what to do. A lot of decisions to make, but we're gonna call it for now. So I appreciate Brock showing up to just give me another point of view as we walk through it. It's nice to walk through properties when you're about to buy them and have somebody else with a fresh set of eyes that isn't invested in it, kind of pick it apart. Look for all the things that are gonna be problems. Look for things you might not have noticed the first couple times you walk through. Because it's not fun to get the property, walk in it, and then all of a sudden start finding all the things you didn't think about because you were excited for the deal. To finish out the day, we'll give you the update on the triplex. So in one of the last videos, I really appreciated all of your feedback about the carpet install we had here. I was pretty furious about that. This one is the one that just gets me the most. There's a couple of these I found just in this crease here. Here's another one. This corner was all buckled up. I don't know. Maybe I'm just super picky. Maybe that's my problem. I could almost go up on every wall and just find frays everywhere. I mean, granted, a lot of these will get covered up by trim on this piece, but some of the other rooms, I mean, it's just kind of like right out in the open in the seams. I'm not a huge carpet guy, so I don't know, but I can see every seam, especially the ones in the middle of the floor, pretty well. But I knew something wasn't quite right. And so, your feedback helped a lot. We called them back. And now you don't see that seam there. The doorways are significantly better. If you remember, I mean, you could see so many seams throughout here. We got the trim down in here too, so this room looks way cleaner. Again, you can kind of see the remnants of it because I haven't vacuumed again, but it does seem way better than it was. I listed this place this morning and it's already gotten tons of good feedback. I will check the messages later tonight and start replying to people, but this place is pretty well desired, probably because it's that two bedroom. I need to replace a water line for this sink and faucet. And then I have a different stove lined up to put in here along with a small kitchenette. I posted this online and disclosed that those things were still gonna get added, but the feedback was still great. People still want the place, they wanna see it. So I have a feeling we're gonna have no problems filling this. So between the new deck, the bathroom, the carpet, and all the other miscellaneous stuff, we have about $10,000 wrapped up into this rehab, which is quite a bit for a small unit, but the nice thing is we probably won't have to worry about it for a long, long time. Long as a tenant doesn't destroy it. I love hearing from you guys. What would this cost you in your area to rent? Around here, it's the Midwest. It's probably lower than you think, but it's always cool to hear, especially you guys in California. I can't believe you guys live that lifestyle. But if you can remember what this place used to look like about six months ago, before we had ever put a dollar into it, I think you can admit it's come a long way. On top of all of this, I know some of you in particular will be very excited to know that the storage unit
building is finally getting shipped out. Some of you exclusively follow this channel just to see how that storage business comes along, but man, has that been a headache. I was supposed to have that building, I don't know, over three months ago. We've gone on six months waiting for that, had the concrete poured and everything, and still nothing. That shows up next week, so stay tuned for that. We're gonna have to have tough conversations with both the carpet company and the storage unit company because both of them have either kept their invoices the same and or not made any adjustments or refunds or credits for all these inconveniences. And if you're familiar with them, let me know. How do you think I should handle that? ask for it, demand it, have a tough discussion. It's not something I like to do, I don't want a handout, but at the same time, I don't want to spend my hard earned money and then be put in these tough inconveniences. Because time truly is money, and they cost me a lot of time, which in the end cost me a lot of money. For example, those storage unit buildings, I was paying interest on those every month that they weren't sitting there. Don't get me wrong, I am super excited to have them sitting there. I think that'll be an incredible way to add value to the shop. Having that building right next to it, forcing equity into that property, it'll be a nice thing to leverage in the future. As you can see, I'm not as worried about dumpsters sometimes as I am this property and all these buildings because at the end of the day, I kind of have more invested in the real estate than I do the dumpster business. Is it the right move? I guess we'll see. But we're gonna call it guys. I appreciate you watching. Give me your feedback on these properties, what we've got done, what we've got ahead of us, because I've got my hands full. I've got a lot of decisions to make. At the end of the day, I really appreciate you guys following the journey, especially you that have been here for a while and seen this from the beginning. And I hope you stay tuned, whether you're here to encourage us or you're here to watch me fail. I hope you enjoy the show.